Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, we're talking a little DeAndre Hopkins news. He signed with the Tennessee Titans yesterday. Two years, $26 million with up to $32 million in incentives that he could gain over these next two years. First year of the deal, fourteen or $12 million. Second year of the deal, $15 million. The $3 million in incentives are pending how he performs here. So if he has 95 catches, 1,500 or 1,050 yards and 10 touchdowns, he gets an additional $3 million. So this is a pretty, pretty good deal for, I feel like both sides. The Titans obviously needed wide receiver help ever since they lost AJ Brown. I feel like that team was kind of reeling a little bit, getting Hopkins in the fold at least allows them to open up some running game for for Henry, assuming he's still there and nothing squarely happens as far as the trade goes. And then you got Burke sitting on the sideline. It kind of gives him a little bit of veteran leadership in front of him. Now, as far as Hopkins and where I think he could have gone, I mean, I'm glad he didn't go to the Patriots. I was sort of like talking myself into the matchup of Sauce Gardner and DeAndre Hopkins, like, oh, I don't have to worry about it. But not having him as a weapon inside the AFC East is definitely at least one breath of fresh air I think Jet fans can, can take from this. Now, him going to the Titans, I, I think he definitely went for the most money. I think, you know, as it as he was sitting out there, nothing kind of materialized, which is weird because Odell Beckham Jr., you know, at when he signed, I think he got what, fifteen million dollars with as much as much as seventeen or eighteen million dollars. So when you're telling me in a vacuum would I rather have D Hop for twelve or, you know, Odell for fifteen, seventeen, I'm taking DeAndre Hopkins all day. He's been healthy, he's been, you know, productive on the field. And maybe a little less of a, a head case than Odell at, at, at times. Um, in the AFC South, I do think the Titans could be a team that could be, you know, you keep an eye on. I, I, feel, I don't know if it changes, uh, according to like sports books, it doesn't really change their Super Bowl odds at all. But I would still put the Jaguars as the cream of the crop, cream of the crop within that division. Then I would say the Colts are closely followed behind. Depending on what their level of quarterback play is, that team could be really good as well. And then as far as the Texans, we don't know what to make of them with the young quarterback at the helm. But Hopkins going there, at least from a, a Jet fan perspective, I like that he's not in the AFC East. From a Jets perspective overall, I know a lot of Jet fans did want DeAndre Hopkins. They were saying, hey, $12 million. What the heck? Corey Davis is making $12 million. Maybe we could, you know, if you had cut Corey Davis, you'd save 10.5. And it's really not a whole heck of a, a big contract to, to add on for the New York Jets. I'm okay with not having DeAndre Hopkins. I very much want players who want to be here first and foremost. And I think Corey Davis at the very least has shown that. I mean, he he's gone through this rough last two years and not to mention like to some level, the Packers tried to trade for him at one point. And I feel like that means Aaron Rodgers wanted to play with him at that point. And I think given all the situations and, and the potential for where Corey Davis could end up, I think there's a possibility you could even restructure Corey Davis, get him back on like a two year deal, drop his cap hit this year a little bit. I think there's a little bit more you could do with Corey Davis. I think he's going to appreciate it a lot more. I think the players in the locker room like him because he's already been around the facility a lot. It seems like Robert Sala was squarely in Corey Davis's corner as well. And I I'm really excited to see Aaron Rodgers or Corey Davis with Aaron Rodgers because he's never had a quarterback to this caliber. And I think showing some loyalty to a guy that's been on your team, that's kind of been going through the same lumps and bruises that you're, you know, the rest of the team has gone through. I like that more than paying an outside player, even though Hopkins is of another caliber um, historically. So I'm looking forward to DeAndre Hopkins not being in the AFC East. I am looking forward to Corey Davis and what he can bring to our team this year. I'm looking forward to this. Now, what does this mean for the rest of the Jets, you know, potential free agent signings that we were all kind of talking about? Does this change anything with Dalvin Cook? Like, does he have more of a impact going somewhere else? Or are the Jets even looking at him? I don't know. I, I still think Cook is probably going to end up with Miami at some point. Hopkins going to the Titans. Cool with that. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you like that Hopkins went to the Titans? Were you kind of hoping he'd stay in the AFC East? Were you really wanting him on the New York Jets? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to get in on our ticket group buy for Jets Chargers Week 9 Monday Night Football, a lot of you kids are going to have off the day after because it's actually Election Day. So if you guys want to come out for that, tickets down below, talkingjets.com if you'd like to participate in that. But as always, boys and girls, let me know your comments in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets! J -E